This is going to be our first lecture of Module 5. In this lecture, we're going to be going over branch circuit general requirements found in Article 210. So our objectives for this lesson, we're going to understand the NEC general requirements for branch circuits, identify where GFCI and AFCI protection is required, list branch circuits required for dwelling units, uh, understand receptacle placement requirements for dwelling units. Uh, so for a little bit more information on this to kind of understand these, um, in this lecture, instead of looking at the specific requirements of Article 210, we're going to be looking more at how it's broken down, where different pieces of information is found, uh, and things of that nature. Um, another thing to keep in mind, Article 210 being found in Chapter 2 of the NEC, it's uh, very specific, so it doesn't list uh, things such as branch circuit requirements for specific pieces of, equip of equipment or things of that nature that would be found in your articles five through se or chapters five through seven. Definitions: branch circuit, the circuit conductors between the final overcurrent device protecting the circuit and the outlets. So an example of this would be, um, you know, in a typical residential situation, a circuit supplying. Uh, receptacles or outlets, you may call them, or a circuit supplying light fixtures. We also have the definition of an outlet, a point on the wiring system at which current is taken to supply utilization equipment. In other words, it's where we're utilizing current at in the circuit. Starting off here, Article 210, branch circuits. Article 210 provides general requirements for branch circuits, once again, stressing this general point and it's separated into three separate parts uh, part one general provisions part two branch circuit ratings and part, th part three which is required outlets so starting into article 210 here some of the general requirements we're going to be talking about identification and limitations 210.5 a through c cover the identifications of conductors this includes grounded conductors, equipment grounding conductors, and ungrounded conductors. 210.6A through E cover voltage limitations, thus being for occupancy limitations, 120 volt between conductors, 277 volts to ground, 600 volts between conductors, and for over 600 volts between conductors. In other words, depending on what type of occupancy or building we're in and also what type of voltage we're working with, we're going to have different requirements that are going to be spelled out in 210.6A through E. Moving on from that, taking a look at GFC and GFCI and AFCI protection, 210.8A through E covers where GFCI protection must be provided. In other words, these are the specific locations for some type for different types of occupancies where we have to have GFCI protection at. It's going to include A dwelling units, part B is other than dwelling units, part C for boat hoist, part D is for kitchen dishwasher circuits, part E is crawl space lighting outlets. 210.12 A through D covers where AFCI protection must be provided. It's the same as our GFCI for 210.8, 210.12 is going to cover the same type of concept but with AFCI protection. Part A once again being for dwelling units, part B being for dormitory units, part C guest rooms and suites, and part D branch circuit extensions or modifications for dwelling and dormitory units. In other words for part D here this is going to be where we are modifying or adding on to an existing circuit in those type of locations, those being dwelling and dormitory units. Now we're going to be taking a look at some required branch circuits we have. 210.11A through C cover required branch circuits. In other words, we, are, we have to have these specific branch circuits. Part C requires branch circuits in four locations for dwelling units. So looking at part C here, these four locations. The first of these locations, we have to have two 20 amp branch circuits for the receptacle specified in 210.52B, one 20 amp circuit for the laundry circuit required by 
F, uh, one 20 amp circuit for bathroom receptacles, and one 20 amp circuit for outlets in attached and detached garages. Once again, these are specific to dwelling units. So in a dwelling unit, these are the branch circuits that the NEC requires we have at a minimum for any dwelling unit. Now, obviously for part four, part four would be omitted if that particular dwelling unit did not have any form of garage. However, if it does have a garage, we have to include at least one 20 amp uh, circuit for that garage. Uh, moving into what's going to be more part three of, uh, or part two of chapter of this article, we're going to take a look at overcurrent protection and outlet devices. 210.20 A through D covers overcurrent protective devices for branch circuits, part A. Uh, this is a very important rule that we'll see. Uh, it's actually one of the most used rules we have from the NEC. Uh, and it's going to be a big factor in our coming lectures when we start to do some circuit calculations. For circuits supplying continuous loads or continuous and non-continuous loads that cannot be less than 125% of the continuous load or 125% of the continuous load plus 100% of the non-continuous. Now, a good definition I should have included with this lecture is the NEC definition for a continuous load. Uh, continuous load is going to be any type of load we have that runs more than three hours at a time during a day. Uh, three hours, if I remember correctly, off the top. Um, so if we know that we're connecting a branch circuit to some type of equipment or utilization equipment that is going to be considered a continuous load, meaning how much, it, how long it runs for, the circuit has to be at least 125% of whatever load that device is. Uh, so a typical example of this is if we have a, a load that's going to be 16 amps, 125% of 16 amps would be 20 amp. So we would be required to provide that piece of equipment with a 20 amp circuit. 210.21A through B cover required ampere ratings for outlet devices. Part A covers lamp holders and part B covers receptacles. So we have specific requirements for uh, these outlets for these specific types of devices. Part two here for B, for circuits supplying two or more receptacles, receptacles cannot supply a load larger than specified in table 210.21B2. In other words, if we have a circuit where we have more than one receptacle on that circuit, uh, we, have a, we have limitations on how much load we can plug into any outlet on that circuit. So looking at our table here, table 210.21B2, maximum cord and plug connected load to a receptacle. Uh, we can kind of break this into half with 210.21B2 and B3 on the bottom. For B2, on the left, we have a circuit rating in amperes. We can see this can be 15 or 20, 20 and 30. Then in the middle column, we have a receptacle rating in amperes. And on the right, we have a maximum load in amperes. So in other words, what this is telling us, if we look at our first row, if we have a circuit rating that is 15 or 20 amps, we can use a 15 amp circuit a 15 amp receptacle on that circuit and we can only plug in a maximum of 12 amps of load to an outlet on that circuit looking at our 20 amp circuit rating for a 20 amp circuit we have to use a 20 amp receptacle and on that circuit we can only plug in a maximum of 16 amps of load to any receptacle on that circuit um, looking at 210.21B3, receptacle ratings for various size circuits, we have a circuit rating in amperes and a receptacle rating in amperes, which is just uh, flat out telling us the, ma the maximum size receptacle we can use on different types of circuits. Moving back to our required outlets, earlier we talked about required circuits, so these are going to be specific 
specifically required outlets, not the actual circuit. And this is going to be talking about dwelling unit receptacles. 210.52A through I list receptacles required by code for dwelling units. Part A is just going to be general provisions. Part B is going to be for small appliances. Part C is for countertops and work surfaces. Part D covers bathrooms, E covers outdoor outlets, F covers laundry areas, G covers basements, garages, and accessory buildings, Part H covers hallways, and Part I covers foyers or foyers, whichever pronunciation you prefer. Uh, in other words, this area where it's listing these required receptacles uh, these are going. This is going to be where you find your physical distances, but for receptacles, so on countertops every 24 inches, uh, for the normal walls in a dwelling unit, you have you know your 12 feet between outlets, or in other words, any within six feet of any point on the wall. Uh, those types of requirements are going to be found here. And that's going to conclude our first lecture of Module 5. In our next session, we're going to be taking a look at service general requirements.